Greenwich is the oldest of London's royal parks and a very interesting place. The name, which is Danish, means Green Bay or Green Harbour. The Danes landed and settled here. Later, the land was given to Duke Humphrey of Gloucester. He embarked it in 1433 and built a house by the river and a tower on the hill. His property reverted to the crown after his death and his house became a royal palace called Placentia. Henry VIII was born here. So was his daughter, Elizabeth I. For the Tudors, Greenwich was a place in the country. They got here by a royal barge from Whitehall Palace to enjoy the fresh air, the Renaissance garden, the tilt yard and the park. Keeping deer was the main reason for making Greenwich Park. They may have been chased on occasion but the park was too small for a full-scale royal hunt. What the Tudors wanted in the days before refrigeration was a reliable supply of fresh meat. One corner of Greenwich Park is still reserved for deer. Please visit them. I worry that some future park manager may think this a good place for a car park. <coughs> The Queen's House was begun in 1616 for James I's Queen and completed in 1635 for Charles I's Queen. It was built on the southwest corner of the Tudor Tilt Yard and is of great architectural importance as the first classical Palladian building in England. An enthusiasm for the classical world was what led to the making of landscape gardens a century later. Originally, the Queen's House bridged the road from Deptford to Woolwich, so that Queen's could get to the park without meeting the public. Their palace was separated from the park by a muddy track bounded by high walls. Today, the public road is nearer the Thames and the old road has become a grand colonnade. It connects the two wings of the National Maritime Museum. In 1649, the future Charles II had been exiled to France. When he returned home to be crowned in 1660, he brought with him a taste for French Baroque gardens. Greenwich Park was designed in a semi-baroque style with a grass parterre designed by André Le Nôtre and a network of avenues which may have been planned by John Evelyn. A great flight of giant steps carried the axis up the hill and through the park. After 1694, the axis was extended. Christopher Wren designed a hospital for the old sailors who had defeated Louis XIV's fleet. Queen Mary asked him to retain the view of the Thames from the Queen's house. This is what gave Greenwich Hospital such an interesting layout. The design of the buildings fitted in with ideas about the park and the river landscape. Greenwich Park was comparatively neglected in the 18th century though occasional public use was allowed for fairs and other events. Rolling down the hill was particularly popular. In the 19th century, it was fully opened to the public, though it still locked at night. Avenues became unpopular in the 18th and 19th centuries. Instead, people wanted serpentine spaces of the kind designed by Lancelot Brown. Edward Kemp, who published several books, wrote of Greenwich Park in 1851 that there are happily not very strong traces of the formal style of Le Nôtre. Kent believed that straight walks and regular lines are not tolerable on undulating ground. Control of the park had shifted from stewards with traditional land-based skills to gardeners with horticultural skills. It became less like a natural park and more of a public garden. 
let's have a look at some of the park's features. The Royal Observatory was commissioned by Charles II in 1675 and was designed by Sir Christopher Wren. The prime meridian of the world from which longitude is measured was established here in 1851 and adopted by an international conference in 1884. At night, the meridian line is now marked by a green laser beam. The flower garden was made in the 19th century and must have been laid out by an admirer of John Claudius Loudon and the Gardenesque. Loudon was the greatest garden writer of the 19th century and this flower garden is the best example of Gardenesque principles in the south of England. We see circular beds which Loudon admired both for their practicality and for their Neoplatonic perfection. Among these beds are cedars of Lebanon, of which Loudon wrote, As an ornamental object, cedars are most magnificent, uniting the grand with the picturesque in a manner not equalled by any other tree. On a lawn they confer dignity. The area round the pond is a fine example of Loudonesque, Gardenesque planting. The species are exotic and the composition is naturalistic. The collection of heathers is a less successful example of the same principle. The rose garden is near the ranger's house. It was made in the second half of the 20th century, but its character is Victorian. The most notable new use for an old feature in Greenwich Park is the avenues of sweet chestnuts. The oldest trees were planted in the 1660s to provide food for the deer. Today, the chestnuts are collected and eaten by humans, particularly by the Chinese and East Europeans. In the 21st century, the management of Greenwich Park took on more conservation objectives. The grass used to be gang mown. Uncut, it is good for fauna and flora and makes Greenwich Park more beautiful and more interesting. The squirrels came to Greenwich about 40 years ago and are now one of the park's big tourist attractions. I'll finish with a short summary of Greenwich Park's design history. It began as a late medieval hunting park with an early Renaissance garden. It was then influenced by the Baroque style in the 17th century, by the Serpentine style in the 18th century and by the Gardenesque style in the 19th century. The green laser beam is a post-abstract 21st century edition and a great idea. Gardenvisit.com has been providing information on garden design garden history and garden tours since 1999.